"The tall man must be your uncle, the magician," Prince Lear mused. "That part's clear enough, anyways. And the bloody hands don't surprise me. I never cared much for his looks, if you'll pardon my saying so. Is that all of the dream?" "I cannot tell you all of it," she said. "It is never finished." Fear came back to her eyes like a great stone falling into a pool. All was clouded and swirling, and quick shadows were rushing everywheres. She said: "I am running away from a good place, where I was safe, and the night is burning around me. But it is day, too, and I am walking under beech trees in the warm, sour rain, and there are butterflies, and a honey sound, and dappled roads, and towns like fish bones, and the flying thing is killing the old woman. I am running and running into the freezing fire, however I turn, and my legs are the legs of a beast—" "Lady," Prince Lear broke in, "my lady, by your leave, no more!" Her dream was darkening into shape between them, and suddenly he did not want to know what it meant. "No more," he said. "But I must go on," said the Lady Amalthea, "for it is never finished. Even when I wake I cannot tell what is real and what I am dreaming, as I move and speak and eat my dinner. I remember what cannot have happened and forget something that is happening to me now. People look at me as though I should know them, and I do know them in the dream, and always the fire draws nearer, though I am awake. No more, he said desperately. A witch built this castle, and to speak of nightmares here often makes them come true. It was not her dream that chilled him, but that she did not weep as she told it. As a hero, he understood weeping women and knew how to make them stop crying. Generally, you killed something. But her calm terror confused and unmanned him, while the shape of her face crumbled, the distant dignity he had been so pleased at maintaining. When he spoke again, his voice was young and stumbling. I would court you with more grace, he said, if I knew how. My dragons and my feats of arms weary you, but they are all that I have to offer. I haven't been a hero for very long, and before I was a hero, I was nothing at all, nothing but my father's dull, soft son. Perhaps I am only dull in a new way now, but I am here, and it is wrong of you to let me go to waste. I wish you wanted something of me. It wouldn't have to be a valiant deed, just useful. Then the Lady Amalthea smiled at him for the first time since she had come to stay in King Haggard's castle. It was a small smile, like the new moon, a slender bend of brightness on the edge of the unseen, but Prince Lear leaned toward it to be warm. He would have cupped his hands around her smile and breathed it brighter if he dared. "'Sing to me,' she said. "'That will be valiant, to raise your voice in this dark, lonely place, and it will be useful as well. "'Sing to me. Sing loudly. Drown out my dreams. Keep me from remembering whatever wants me to remember it. "'Sing to me, my lord prince, if it pleases you. It may not seem a hero's task, but I would be glad of it.' So Prince Lear sang out lustily, there on the cold stairway and many damp, unseen creatures went flopping and scurrying for cover before the daylight gaiety of his voice. He sang the first words that came to him, and they were these. When I was a young man, and very well thought of, I couldn't ask aught that the ladies denied. I nibbled their hearts like a handful of raisins, and I never spoke love, but I knew that I lied. But I said to myself, Ah, they none of them know the secret I shelter and savor and save. I wait for the one who will see through my seeming, and I'll know when I love by the way I behave. The years drifted over like clouds in the heavens. The ladies went by, by me like snow on the wind. I charmed and I cheated, deceived and dissembled, and I sinned and I sinned and I sinned and I sinned. But I said to myself, Ah, they none of them see me. That's part of me pure as the whisk of a wave. My lady is late, but she'll find I've been faithful, and I'll know when I love by the way I behave. At last came a lady, both knowing and tender, saying, You're not at all what they take you to be. 
I betrayed her before she had quite finished speaking, and she swallowed cold poison and jumped in the sea. And I say to myself, when there's time for a word, as I gracefully grow more debauched and depraved, Ah, love may be strong, but a habit is stronger, and I knew when I loved by the way I behaved. The Lady Amalthea laughed when he was done and that sound seemed to set the old, old darkness of the castle hissing back from them both. That was useful, she said. Thank you, my lord. I don't know why I sang that one, Prince Lear said awkwardly. One of my father's men used to sing it to me. I don't really believe it. I think that love is stronger than habits or circumstances. I think it is possible to keep yourself for someone for a long time, and still remember why you were waiting when she comes at last. The Lady Amalthea smiled again, but she did not answer, and the prince took a single step closer to her. Marveling at his own boldness, he said softly, I would enter your sleep if I could, and guard you there, and slay the thing that hounds you, as if I would as I would if it had the courage to face me in fair daylight, but I cannot come in unless you dream of me. Before she could speak, if she meant to, they heard footsteps below them on the winding stair, and King Haggard's veiled voice, saying, I heard him singing. What business had he to be singing? Then Schmendrick, the royal w wizard, his own voice, meek and hurried, Sire, it was but some heroic lay, some chanson de geste, such as he often sings when he rides out to glory, or rides home to renown. Be assured, your majesty. He never sings here, the king said. He sings continuously on his fool's wanderings, I am sure, because that is what heroes do. But he was singing here, and not of battle and gallantry either, but of love. Where is she? I knew he was singing of love before I even heard him, for the very stones shuddered as they do when the bull moves in the earth. Where is she? The prince and the lady Amalthea looked at each other in the darkness, and in that moment they were side by side, though neither moved. With this came fear of the king, for whatever had been born between them, it might have been something he wanted. A landing above them gave on to a corridor. They turned and ran together though they could not see beyond their breaths. Her feet were as silent as the promise she had given him, but his own heavy boots rang exactly like boots on the stone floor. King Haggard made no pursuit, but his voice rustled down the hallway after them, whispering under the magician's words. Mice, my lord, beyond a doubt. Fortunately, I am possessed of a singular spell. Let them run, the king said. It suits me well that they should run. When they stopped running, wherever they stopped, they looked at each other again. So the winter whined and crept along, not toward any spring, but toward the brief, devouring summer of King Haggard's country. Life in the castle went on in the silence that fills a place where no one hopes for anything. Molly grew cooked and laundered, scrubbed stone, mended armor, and sharpened swords. She chopped wood, milled flour, groomed horses, and cleaned their stalls, melted down stolen gold and silver for the king's coffers, and made, and made bricks without straw. And in the evenings, before she went to bed, she usually read over Prince Lear's new poems to the Lady Amalthea, and praised them, and corrected the spelling. Schmendrick fooled and juggled and flim-flammed as the king bade him, hating it, and knowing that King Haggard hated it too, and took his pleasure thereby. He never again suggested to Molly that they escape from the castle before Haggard made sure of the truth of Lady Amalthea, but he no longer sought to discover the secret way down to the Red Bull, even when he was allowed time to himself. He seemed to have surrendered, not to the king, but to some far older, crueler enemy that had caught up with him at last, this winter in this place.'